Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. Special thanks to all of my patrons. My name's Neil and it's time for the finale of The Haunting of Bly Manor. We're already here guys, I can't believe it. It feels like I just started this series last week uh, and yet it's another really cool Mike Flanagan series. Like a lot of you warned me slash told me as I, before I got into it, it's a very different feel, a very different tone from The Haunting of Hill House, which was just stunning and gripping and genuinely frightening. I, I can't say I've been frightened nearly as much here in Blind Manor, but it's a much more sort of goth, gothic romantic feel to it. Certainly more of a period piece, even though it's mostly set in the 87, like not that much earlier than Hill House was set, um, but it just feels of a different era. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's based on um, the turn of the screw, Henry James. So it's it's got that period feel for a reason, um, but but it's also because of the subject matter. I think you know Hill House was all about family falling apart, and Bly Manor is about relationships falling apart or doomed to fail, and you know that we we've seen so many instances of that just within the story. All of these. Uh, couples that didn't work for all sorts of different reasons, whether it's uh, Danny and Edmund because Danny's interests lied elsewhere, or um, Hannah and Owen because Hannah's dead and Owen doesn't even know it, or the Wingraves who <sighs> fell apart because of her infidelities and his, his anger. Um, or go back to the 17th century and uh, Arthur and Viola um, just because of her illness. You know, like the, there's no right people and wrong people necessarily in these relationships. It's just relationships are doomed to fail and not often the, um, the aftermath, the, the remnants, the shrapnel of a, of a failed relationship. Um, takes out so many innocents within the, the blast radius of it all. Um, and Viola in particular has created this, this very powerful blast radius around Bly Manor, which persists to this day because of how she was, per how she perceived that she was done wrong by her sister. And let's, let's be fair, her sister killed her. Um, so, She's got a fair point. Um, but yeah, man, I'm not optimistic for Danny right now. Obviously, she's in grave physical peril. Uh, with Viola's hand around her neck being dragged off to the lake, as far as we can tell. So, um, and the only person who's aware of it is is little Flora. Now, can Flora do something to, to save it? Uh, can Jessica maybe do something? Uh, sorry, can Rebecca do something? I just don't know. It's um, it's a it's a nerve wracking situation that we've kind of hung on for a while since the end of episode seven. We we we've hung on that that moment through all of episode eight, and and now hopefully we'll finally get some resolution to it. But it's also the finale, so I feel like there's a lot more resolution that needs to be had before the show is concluded. Anyway. I'm excited, so let's jump right into it, guys. This is episode nine of The Haunting of Bly Manor, and it's called The Beast in the Jungle. My name is Hannah Gross. The year is 1987. Dominic is dead. Charlotte is dead. Rebecca and Peter are dead. I'm dead. Yes. She has come to terms. I always think that I would very much like to spend the rest of my days with you. Mm. I should have told you. What a life we could have had. I prefer it here. Mm. You can't leave because you died there. You must help all of us out there. In here, I'm you. 
Can we get Hannah to the rescue? Be brave in death, Hannah. <laughs> Oh, she's heading into the house. I thought. Laura, get inside. Stop. Oh. Okay. That's what happens when two ghosts meet. Yeah. I didn't realize those portraits were still in there. Oh. Who's coming out? Is that. Is that Peter coming out? He has. Miles? Uh, don't kill Danny. She's not putting up a fight anymore. Please, let her go. She knows she's there for a child. Yeah. <laughs> so that gasping voice is her quote, singing. I gave you your freedom. And you're letting it drown. Is he finally coming back? That's your daughter, man. Go save her. That's it! Put her down! Just like that? Wow. This is not, uh... Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> Danny's a freaking rock star. Who's the second car? Oh? They're back. They need you at the lake. And she's just gone. She warned them. Please, Come on, Rebecca. Okay, Do something more than this. You feel it. Ugh. Okay, I'll feel it for you. That's no good. Oh. You let me handle this part. No, it's terrible. Let me in. It's me. It's me. It's us. Now she's just tucked away. In a happy memory. It's alright. Right. Everybody's gonna die. It's alright. Something she felt in her bones. She had to try. It's, it's you! It's me! It's us! Oh. Is she saying that to Viola? When he checks the well, please tell Owen I'm sorry. It's just... <laughs> oh! Check the well. <laughs> Is it... Miles again, or is it still Peter? What did Danny saying that? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Miles, I'm sorry. Too late, Peter. You're an asshole. An asshole of a ghost and an asshole of a man. What hap? Did she just put herself into? Where'd Viola Viola go? The au pair invited Viola into herself, and the invitation had been accepted. And so Viola is living in Danny now? And all of the spirits trapped in her gravity were released. Uncle Henry! Miles! I'm so very sorry. But it's not Danny anymore then. Hannah, where's... where's Hannah? <sighs> Check the well. This is just a whirlwind of an episode. He stayed at her side until she was buried. And he loved her the whole way. I got distracted. Is it Danny or... My son? I feel her. Okay. Rage. And I have this feeling like I'm walking through this dense jungle. This angry, empty, lonely beast. Watching me. It's waiting. At some point. She's gonna come out. She's gonna take me. Are you wait for your beast in the jungle? Do you want company? Don't leave her hanging. There. 
Jamie the Riveter. Are you sure you want to give me this one? You must have it. It's you. Take care. Yeah. Be safe. Well, I'm just so goddamn lucky, aren't I? And so are you, Miss Clayton. Well, it's the sunniest it's ever been in a Mike Flanagan shot. I don't think you should play him, you know, Christmas. It's a ways away. One day at a time. <laughs> One day at a time is fine by me. As long as those days with you pop in. The days turn to months. The months to more. And before the au pair knew it, a year had passed. And she was still here. She was still her. What's... That's all very good. I, I was half expecting her to kill herself or something soon. We've got a problem, Poppins. I'm not sick of you. At all. <laughs> I'm actually pretty in love with you, it turns out. One year became two. And from two, it spread into an endless time. So it seemed. Is Jamie our narrator? Three. Four. Five years would pass. At long last, deep within the old pair's heart, there was peace more than some of us ever get. Uh, and then... I found it on the street. I wanted to save it. Give it here, then. Well, there's your problem. Your roots, I can... It's a promise room. <laughs> Look at her! You're my best friend. And I love my life. And I don't know how much time we have left. But however much it is, I want to spend it with you. And I know we can't technically get married, but I also don't really care. That's enough for me. If it's enough for you. I reckon that's enough for me. <laughs> What a cute proposal. <laughs> and nothing was better than that woman's laugh. Yeah. To Hannah. To Hannah. Hannah. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. They all came here a few months back. On holiday. I've always got a boyfriend. She's 12. <laughs> She's 17. <laughs> Christ. Fully smitten. Henry is terrified. So they're all happy? They don't remember anything about it. What? Really? Nothing. No. The fear of it all that we were so afraid would infect the rest of their lives is just... Gone. Faded away. They forgot. Do you think Henry will... tell them? Would you? Let them live their lives the way Keep they Keep them tucked no, away. They deserve that. Jesus! I saw her. I saw her. Danny, we could have so many more years. We'll keep an eye on it, and it'll be fine. Is she just going to be gone one day? Our union is officially civil. I'll marry her again when we can. Oh, no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Danny. Oh no, 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 no. Danny. <laughs> Danny. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I thought she'd okay. drowned herself or something. I feel myself fading away, but I'm still here. <laughs> I don't understand You're still how that is. Here. No. Maybe I should just accept that no. and go. No. No. She's just been haunted by reflections. <laughs> yeah. She's going to run away if she had that happen to her. She could not risk the most important thing, her most important person, not for one more day. Uh. The gardener, 
said the words she'd heard those years ago. She willed it with everything she had. You, me, us, us. Take me with you, she cried in her heart. The lady in the lake was also Danny. And Danny wouldn't. Danny would never. For the rest of her days, the gardener would gaze into reflections, hoping to see her face, her own lady in the lake. Yep. Should she ever She's the narrator. Waiting for her lover to return. We saw Carla Gugino doing that. She would know nothing of the gardener, nothing of their life. She's together. still got the ring. The details would all fade away. She will merely walk the grounds of Bly. Harmless as a dove for all of her days. Christ, is that the time? I think I'll stay here a moment. You okay? I'm oh, perfect. Uh oh. Just enjoying the fire. I liked your story. But I think you set it up wrong just in the beginning. Is that so? Yeah. You said it was a ghost story. It's a love story. Same thing, really. <laughs> How am I supposed to just live a life that he's not in? We'll be hard every day and it won't get easier. But you'll find little moments, little pieces of your life that remind you of him. And they'll be silly and dumb or <laughs> they'll be sad and you'll cry for hours. And you'll hold them tight. Thank you. I feel like I should hug you. It's a funny coincidence, I suppose. My middle name is Flora. What year is this supposed to be? Could that be Flora? She did move to America. I know you're on to me. Yeah. That I only It's gonna be the way you think it ought to be. It seems like every time I try to make it right it all. But I turn away from you. It seems like every time I try to make Just the hand on her shoulder. And there it is, guys. The Haunting of Blind Manor comes to an end. And something about Mike Flanagan, man. He, he, he takes me on these stories that go in completely unexpected directions. And I'm cool with it. I'm very cool with it because it gives you an ending you didn't even know you needed. I... I, I wasn't expecting the whole climax that we've been setting up for the last couple of episodes to get resolved in the first 15 minutes of this episode. Certainly wasn't expecting for Danny to invite the lady in the lake into her. Um, but then we get this sort of like happily ever after resolution, which becomes this extended epilogue. And this sort of relationship yet again between Danny and Jamie that's destined to fail but that doesn't mean that the time they spent together wasn't incredibly precious and valuable I'm not gonna cry I'm not gonna cry um, I had an inkling that perhaps our narrator was Jamie a couple of episodes ago. I should have said something, but it it, it became clear relative. It certainly became clear early in this episode that that was the case. And, and one half of me wants to say shame on you, Mike Flanagan, for cheating and setting up that um, the 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 story at the rehearsal dinner right at the beginning uh, as being older versions of all our main characters. Shame on you because 
that wasn't the best match for Owen, for instance. And while I would certainly believe that that could be grown up Flora, I didn't necessarily buy that that was grown up Miles and it felt like Uncle Henry had aged too much, but half of me is saying shame on you and half of me is saying shame on me because Flanagan's done this before. We had um, we had the father in The Haunting of Hill House being played by two grown men in in the two different time periods and man and that that it caught me by surprise that that was the case like I, I i had a good hunch that carlo gugino was playing jamie but i the rest of it caught me by surprise until we got the flora um reveal but it is odd or convenient that the kids forgot it all and uh, it was just the adults that were there Owen and Henry that remembered um, but I also like Flora the Bride's comment that it's not a ghost story it's a love story and uh yeah, I mean, there's certainly been elements of that all the way through, and it's just how you look at relationships. Like, they don't have to last forever to be incredibly valuable. They they can have their moment in the sun, and they can end, and you can you can treasure that, or you can live in the pain of it ending. Well, this isn't Neil's love advice. <laughs> Trust me, I'm the last person to be be offering it. But uh, let's not go further down that path. Let's talk about this show. I really enjoyed it. I know it for a lot of you, it's not your favorite Flanagan work, and that's fair. That's fair. You're you're. We're all going to have our own preferences. But I do feel like this had such big shoes to fill because it was the immediate successor to Hill House and because it went in a different tangent um, and perhaps it wasn't quite as perfectly realized as the original. Um, it was just in a very challenging situation. But I am psyched to be moving on to Midnight Mass next because I've heard excellent things about Midnight Mass and you guys seem to be very excited for me to start Midnight Mass and so I will be starting Midnight Mass next week. So there's something to look forward to. And for those of you that uh, followed me on this journey, let me just thank you. Um, I, I love your comments. I, I love all your feedback. It means the world to me. And until next time, everybody. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.